Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a girls night out get ready with me. For this look, I'm going to show you my skincare prep, my glam process, and also some little fake tan hacks that I use when I'm going out with the girls. So if you wanna know how I got this look here, just keep watching. So we're gonna start off the glam prep with the Neutrogena Deep Clean Purifying Clay Mask and Cleanser. I really like this product, I've been using it for ages. I think this is like my third one I've used because you can use it as both a mask and a cleanser which is really handy for on the go. If I'm going out with the girls and I've had a really long day, sometimes my skin can look a little bit blur and you know that you need a really nice base for makeup. Your skin being nice is what is going to make your makeup look nice. So having a gentle mask like this is amazing because it does deep clean the skin, but it doesn't dry out the skin, which is usually the problem with clay masks. But this mask has barrier care technology, which targets impurities without stripping the skin. So it then just leaves your skin looking soft and glowing and a perfect smooth base for makeup. So I just apply that using a mask brush, a skincare brush, but you don't have to. You can use your hands, of course. I just like to be really precise and put it on really evenly because I'm weird. But then I just put it all over my face. You can use this in like certain areas as well if you just want to do your chin or just do your cheeks you do what you want I like to put it all over so that my skin is really smooth all over all I have to do then is leave it on for five minutes take a bit of a dance break and then wash it off so to wash it off I'm just using a little bit of water on the face to kind of break up the mask and emulsify it this kind of shows you how it works as a cleanser as well and then I use a face cloth that is dipped in hot water just kind of hot to the hand not too hot and I wipe it all off my face and you can see now up close my skin looks really smooth it doesn't look overly dry or anything it looks really nice and clean and ready for makeup and also making sure that my skin is perfect for makeup i'm going to add a hydrating serum and also a really hydrating moisturizer too because if you put any makeup on top of you know skin that doesn't have a really nice hydrated base too it's not going to look its best so between the mask and the hydrating products you have the ultimate base for your makeup and it's just gonna go on so smoothly and evenly and you gonna be flawless. Next up, tanning. I do have fake tan on, but it's not at its darkest or most smooth, so I'm going to use some instant tan over that. I'm going to use the Sally Hansen Airbrush Legs. I like the squeezy formula, not the spray, and I'm also gonna use the Bondi Sands Gloss Finishing Glow. The Sally Hansen by itself is too matte, and the Bondi Sands by itself is too glowy and dark, but together they give me like the perfect color, and it really smooths out and evens out the skin, kind of like applying foundation to my skin. So I'm just gonna apply that to any areas that I think will be coming out of my outfit. It just evens up my tan, makes my skin look really nice, and yeah, I use this trick all the time. It's just applying it to my hands as well to make sure I don't have those white paw hands that you get from when your fake tan is rubbing off. God, I love instant tan, it just fixes everything. So after that, I'm going to move on to makeup. I'm starting off with Huda Beauty's foundation and I'm mixing a little bit of a foundation darkener with that because the shade I have is too light. Oh, don't you hate when you get to the end of the foundation and it runs out? So yeah, I'm just mixing those two together. This is a really good trick if you don't want to buy like heaps of colors of foundation if you fake tan. So you just put as much of the darkener in as you need to match your fake tan. So I'm mixing it up, applying it to my face and you'll see it is a perfect match for my tan. So I'm just going to smooth that all over the face with my Beauty Blender. I have pretty wet this Beauty Blender. And even though this is a super full coverage foundation, I find when I have really hydrated skin, really smooth skin, and I use the Beauty Blender, it really goes on super flawlessly and quite naturally for a really high coverage foundation. So then I'm going into eyes and priming with the new NARS Eye Primer, really like this. I do prefer to blend this in with a Beauty Blender over a brush, it just, Gets a bit streaky with a brush, I think, so there's a little tip for you. And I'm also going to set this with powder. This is the Kat Von D Loose Powder. I really like this powder. It's one of the only ones I'm reaching for lately. It's kind of like an all-rounder. So once I have that done, I did start my eyeshadow, but then I realized, oh, I need to do a brow. So I went on to my brows. I'm using Benefit Cabrow, just filling in the shape of my brows. I do have them tinted and shaped, so I'm just really like thickening that up and making it look more full. Nothing too crazy. If you do want a brow tutorial, let me know. I haven't done one in ages. But I'm also gonna set that with the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. This is amazing. It makes the brows look 
hairy again after you put product in them, but it also keeps them set for the night. So now I'm moving on to the Fenty Moroccan Spice Eyeshadow Palette. These eyeshadows are amazing. I'm going in with this pink shade to start my transition and a fluffy brush, taking that all through the crease and winging it out towards the end. All of my looks, I like to keep them very blended and diffused, so I do spend a lot of time blending. I don't add in all that time to my you know, video because it's boring, but do take your time blending. You know, checking in the mirror, going back, using a clean blend blending brush to get soft edges, whatever you need to do. I'm now taking a more precise blending brush with the same shade and going back and forth in the crease. You can see how I'm creating a slightly darker gradient and that helps me to wing out on the end without getting messy. Going into this darker kind of brown maroon shade and taking that through the crease again, creating that kind of smokier gradient from darkness in the crease to lightness towards the brow bone. I think these kind of blending stages are very self-explanatory. If you watch, you can see kind of the method to what I'm doing. Now taking an even smaller fluffy brush and concentrating directly in the crease. And you can see we're working on that V shape out towards the end of the eye, which really lengthens the eye and gives you that beautiful almond shape. Always going back in with blending brushes and softening edges. Going into this new Fenty palette that I can't remember the name of, but I will link below. I think it's the Kilowatt Foil palette. And I'm using this dark brown red shade, which is gorgeous. I'm using that all across the lid and building it up so it's nice and deep. These are super shimmery, but also really pigmented shades. They're for the face and for the eye. I just think they're gorgeous. Fenty are killing it with their eyeshadow formulas. Applying that all over the lid area and then blending that out with one of my blending brushes I used previously. You can add a little bit more of that kind of pink or soft brown on if you need some extra product to blend, but usually what's on the brush will do you. Always using it to blend that V shape at the end. That's the most important bit that's going to give you that really seamless look. Now I'm going into the coppery kind of gold shade on a wet brush and I'm popping that all across the center of my eyelid, building it up until I get a really nice sheen that gives you that pop spotlight eye, I think people call it. I'm not really down with the technical terms, but I really like how this looks. It really opens up the eye when you are doing a slightly darker smoke. And now finally, I'm going into this matte cool brown shade and I'm applying that to the outer corner to once again deepen up the look, using a pencil brush to get the color in place and then a fluffier brush to blend it out. Take your time with this. There's no hurry. It's girls night. We love taking our time getting ready. I'll try and link below a lot of the brushes that I used. I'm really liking these brushes right now. Finally going into this shimmery glitzy shade and applying that to my inner corner and my brow bone for a highlight. Now I'm going in with this Fenty I can't remember what it's called. Fly liner. Fly liner. That's it. And I'm doing my liner. I cannot begin to tell you the trouble I had with my liner this day. I had to go back in several times to clean it up. I used some micellar water and a really sharp angled brush to clean up. You'll see now in a second. But I finally got there. Eventually, I got there. This is a really great liner. I'm just really bad at liner. So I found that the skill in liner for me is not how I do it, it's how I fix it. And it always works out pretty well for me these days. But yeah, it takes a while, as you can see. My cellar water and an angle brush is such a great trick for cleaning up eyeliner. You'll see how much sharper I can get those edges and you can even precisely fix it on the top of the liner, which is kind of the hardest part because you don't want to ruin your eyeshadow. And then afterwards, I just go back in with a pencil brush and the eyeshadow shades. Yeah, that's me having a bit of a moment after trying to fix that liner, but thank goodness it worked out in the end. Just applying some mascara now. This is the new Hourglass caution mascara i'm so bad with product names i will link them all below for you in the description box this is a great mascara really enjoying this one now for concealer back to my old beloved mac pro longwear because all concealers hate me right now and i'm just applying that with a beauty blender under the eye and i'll use some on the chin as well and any areas that i know my foundation comes off more quickly or i want more coverage or the areas where i want to brighten up so under the eyes you know the central areas that you want to highlight now I'm going to bake under the eyes. This is the Kat Von D powder again. It's really nice and light for brightening. I'm applying that all under the eyes, across the chin and underneath the cheekbones. And I'm going to leave this set while I'm putting on lashes and stuff. This isn't a necessary step for everyone. I just find this really works for me for super glam makeup. So now I'm using Nikia Joy lashes. This is the Victoria style, I think. Nikia's lashes are bomb. 
This is another thing I have trouble with. Eyeliner, eyeliner and lashes are not my forte, but we get there in the end. I use some duo glow to pop those on. I'm not the person to teach you how to put on lashes, but I got there in the end. Now I'm just sweeping away that baking powder and going to finish up the face. I'm moving on to contouring and I really like this Benefits Hoola Light Bronzer lately for contouring. Haven't I didn't really use it when it first came out, but I'm loving it now. I'm just applying that underneath the cheekbones, across my temples, my forehead, and then going back in with my powder brush to blend. And I just feel like it's not quite as harsh as going in with like, you know, the hula itself or straight in with the bronzer. I really like it. It's also really good for contouring the nose and I find it blends really well, but you do need to have powdered skin for this to blend really well, just FYI. Loving the Becca bronzers right now as well. They're so underrated. They blend just as buttery and gorgeous as the highlighters which you know I love so I'm using this just across the tops of the cheeks and forehead kind of moving um, the blend on from that contour and just kind of shaping the face a little bit more but also warming it up and then using it on my chin because sometimes I get a bit of a double chin you know how it is <laughs> then I'm moving on to the Fenty how many carats highlighter this is such a strange highlighter because I don't normally like highlighters that have like glitter in it but the glitter in this ends up looking very wet look. I don't know what it is, it's amazing. I did fix plus my face beforehand, which helps of course, but I don't know, it just gives you this wet look shine. It's so gorgeous. Normally I don't like highlighters, the faces I'm just making. Normally I don't like highlighters that are this frosty, but I dig this so hard, it's amazing. I even put it on my body as well when I'm going out. So down the nose, across the cheekbones, inner corners, brow bone, everywhere. Michelle is an over highlighter and I'm not ashamed to say it. For lips, I'm using a MAC lip liner just to get some shape to my lips. Then I'm using the Fenty lipstick in the shade Single. I'm moving on to the Fenty Gloss Balm. This is a really nice lip combination. Fenty Gloss Balm was really hyped up when it first came out and I was a bit like, meh, what's this about? It's just a lip gloss but really love this lip gloss. It is more of like an oily gloss. It feels amazing, tastes amazing, smells amazing and doesn't dry out your lips so if you're looking into getting gloss balm I do recommend. As always I just want to go back in and finish up the eyes, go onto the lower lash lines. So I'm taking this shade and I'm running that on an angled brush all underneath my eye just to make sure those edges are not too sharp and that we have continuity built onto the lower lash line. Taking a slightly smaller brush that you can't see because my mirror is in the way and making sure that's all blended out. Then I'm also going to go in with an eyeliner. This is the Marc Jacobs liner in the shade Irony. It's kind of like a cool tone, dark brown. I don't like to use black too often because it can be too harsh, but these browns are gorgeous. Just applying that to my waterline and tight line, and then I'm going back in with a dense, short-haired smudgy brush, if you can see it here. And this really helps you to blend the shadow and the liner into the lash line so that there's no harsh kind of separation between the two. I really don't know if I explained that well, but I hope I did. Now, just topping up my lips with final touches. I did curl my hair, but I have so many curling hair videos that I'm just gonna link one for you instead of boring you. Just adding some earrings. I popped on a new dress that I got from Lioness. I'm really liking this. It's kind of like, I don't know, got some cool sleeves. It's kind of like sucks you in, love that. Just fixing my hair, getting the outfit, you know, on point. Just highlighting the collarbones with the Fenty highlight as well and my shoulders. I don't know, this just really makes your tan pop. It makes everything look kind of like seamless from the face to the shoulders. You're highlighted everywhere. This is my dress. I just thought I'd show you really quickly because I really like it. I'll try link it below, but it was on sale, so I don't know if it's still around. This is like how the look is coming together. Really, really like this kind of look. And that is my girls night out look. Skin, tan, and makeup. I hope you enjoyed it. I love this look. It is one of my go-to kind of looks. Love the outfit. Everything in this is like products that I have been adoring lately and the tans I've been using for so, so long. But anyway, if you like this kind of video, please let me know. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments. Let me know if you've tried any of these products, if you liked them. And thank you to Neutrogena for sponsoring this video. I have been using this mask for so long and it's so nice to be sponsored by a brand which products you already love. So it works out really, really nicely. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day and I will talk to you again really, really soon.